Hi again. Now that you know what's involved in user research, let's talk about user research methods. The term methods refers to how you get the research done. There are many different ways to get the answers we need from users, and you'll decide which research method to use based on the questions you need answered. Each method has positives and negatives, which we'll cover in another video. Before we jump into each research method, let's cover the basics. There are two ways we categorize research methods. The first way is based on who conducts the research. The second way is based on the type of data collected. So first, let's think about who conducts the research. Primary research is research you conduct yourself. For example, you might interview users, survey users, or conduct a usability study to hear from users directly. Secondary research is research that uses information someone else has put together. Secondary research can be information from books, articles, or journals. You've probably done secondary research before and not even realized it. Did you know looking up the statistics of a sports team counts as secondary research? Most of the time, secondary research is done at the very beginning of the product development life cycle, before any ideation happens. Secondary research is often done by product leads, not UX designers. But the insights they share can help you make a stronger case for your design choices and gain more empathy for your users. Another way to categorize research methods is to think about the type of data collected. Data can be collected through qualitative or quantitative research. Quantitative research focuses on data that can be gathered by counting or measuring. Quantitative research is often based on surveys of large groups of people using numerical answers. This type of research often answers questions like how many and how much. If you want to know how the majority of users are experiencing a product, you should use quantitative research. On the other hand, Qualitative research focuses on observations. Qualitative research is often based on interviews, where we focus on a smaller number of users and understand their needs in greater detail. This type of research answers questions like, why, or how did this happen? If you want to know why users are having a bad experience with your product and how to improve it, you should use qualitative research. Here's a quick way to remember the difference. Quantitative research gives you the what, and qualitative research gives you the why. So now that you know the basics of how we categorize research, it's time to dive into some common research methods. Let's start with interviews. Interviews are a research method used to collect in-depth information on people's opinions, thoughts, experiences, and feelings. Interviews are usually conducted in person and include a series of open-ended questions where the researcher asks the user about their experience. Use interviews when your questions require a detailed response. For example, can you spot the difference between these two questions? How would you rate your experience using the app on a scale of 1 to 10? Versus, how was your experience using the app? The second question is open-ended and allows the user to share more about their experience. Next up, surveys. Surveys are an activity where many people are asked the same questions in order to understand what most people think about a product. Surveys allow us to hear from a larger number of users than we can during interviews. Surveys include a mix of quantitative and qualitative questions. Surveys are most useful after you have some initial understanding of the user's pain points and want to solidify that by surveying a larger number of people. Finally, Let's talk about usability studies. Usability studies are a technique that help us evaluate a product by testing it on users. The goal of a usability study is to identify pain points that the user experiences with different prototypes, so the issues can be fixed before the final product launches. During a usability study, you get a chance to see how your end users interact with your new product or feature and afterwards you can interview the users to learn more about their experience. The usability study data is then used to improve the UX of the design. If the product has already launched, a post-launch usability study might include data like success metrics and key performance indicators, which are commonly known as KPIs. 
Key performance indicators are critical measures of progress toward an end goal. The KPIs for an app or new product launch might include things like how much time the user spent on a task or the number of clicks they used to make a purchase. You'll learn how to conduct your own usability study soon. Now that you know all the research methods, you might be wondering how you can possibly pick one. The key thing to remember is that the research method we choose is decided by the question we are trying to answer. As you start working on a specific project, you'll be able to define the questions that will lead you to the best method. Next up, we'll check out the advantages and disadvantages of the methods we just introduced, interviews, surveys, and usability studies.